Hey everyone, ready to get a jump on those 2024 tax changes? We've got that new IRS press release. Uh, it's IR 2023-208, I think. Yeah, 2023-208. And uh, we're gonna like decode it all, you know, oh for you. So grab your coffee, get comfy, and let's figure out what these inflation adjustments could mean for your wallet. You know, it really is amazing how inflation is just hitting every part of the tax code. I mean, it's yeah. not just like the big stuff, but all these little details, it could really add up. So let's just jump right into it. First, we've got the standard deduction getting bigger. So 2024 married couples filing jointly are looking at a $29,200 deduction. Wow. Single filers and those married filing separately, they get $14,600 and heads of households are at $21,900. So think about it. You could be keeping thousands more dollars away from taxes this year. Do you think this will change how people plan for their taxes? Well, it's definitely something to think about. The standard deduction is kind of like a shield, right? Yeah. It lowers your taxable income, so you might end up owing less in taxes. It's almost like a discount you get on your income before they even start figuring out your taxes. <laughs> oh, I like that. A discount before the tax man comes knocking. Now, this higher standard deduction could make some people change how they file their taxes. I mean, if you've been itemizing you know, in the past, maybe just taking the standard deduction makes more sense this year. All right. It's all about figuring out what works best for you. Yeah, exactly. You gotta compare those options. Yeah. Now let's switch gears a bit and talk about those tax brackets. Okay. They've been adjusted just like every year for, you guessed it, inflation. Here's where things get interesting. So the tax rates themselves haven't changed. Right. But the income levels where those rates kick in, those have gone up. Think of the tax brackets like steps on a staircase. Mm. Inflation is pushing those steps higher. So maybe you can climb a little further before hitting that next tax rate. Could this mean more money in your pocket or are there other things to consider? That's the question, right? The top rate that 37% is still there for the highest earners. Those making over $609,350 if you're single or $731,200 if you're married filing jointly. But even those thresholds are higher than last year. Right. And for those not in that top bracket, there's good news too. The other rates, 35%, 32%, 24%, 22%, 1%, 1%, and that lowest one, 10%, they all apply to different income ranges. And those ranges, they've all been bumped up. Yeah. That lowest 10% rate, it applies to incomes up to $11,600 for single filers or double that for joint filers. It's about knowing where you stand on that staircase. Exactly. Now let's tackle something that I think confuses a, a lot of people, the alternative minimum tax or AMT. Oh yeah. So it's basically a separate calculation they do to make sure that those higher earners are paying their fair share no matter what deductions or credits they might have. Right. And for 2024, that AMT exemption amount is going up to $85,700 and that phase out starts a bit higher too. So maybe fewer people will have to do with the AMT in 2024. That sounds good for those who fall into that category. But I guess we should say it again, everyone's taxes are different, right? Absolutely. That We're is. giving you the big picture here. Yeah. But you know, talking to a tax pro is always a smart move for advice that's just for you. For sure. Now let's talk about a credit that's designed to help those who are working hard to make ends meet. It's the Earned Income Tax Credit or EITC. And it can really make a difference for low to moderate income families. And for 2024, it's getting even better. It is. The maximum credit amount has gone up, which is great news. For example, those taxpayers who qualify and have three or more children will see that maximum jump to $7,830. Wow, that's a big increase. It shows why it's so important to stay up to date on these tax changes. You might find you qualify for benefits you didn't even know about. Exactly. You never know. Now we've covered some of the big changes, but there are a bunch of other adjustments too. Things like transportation fringe, benefits, those health flexible spending arrangements, you know, FSAs. Right. Yeah. And medical savings accounts or MSAs. Yeah, those too. But hold on. Before we jump into all that, I want to hear from you, our listeners. What's caught your attention so far? Are there any changes that you're really curious about? Maybe you're wondering how those standard deduction changes could affect your taxes. Or perhaps you're thinking about those shifting tax brackets. We'll be back in part two to unpack even more of these adjustments and what they might mean for your tax planning, so stay tuned. Okay, so we're back and ready to dig into those other adjustments we talked about before. You know, those transportation fringe benefits and the health flexible spending arrangements, those FSAs, and of course medical savings accounts, the MSAs. Where should we start? Mm. Well, let's look at those health-related adjustments first, mm. you know, because they can really make a difference in your pocket. Those monthly limits for parking and transit, they're going up just a little bit to $315. But where it gets really interesting is with those FSAs, that limit on how much you can set aside from your salary, it's going up to $3,200. And that carryover amount is higher, too. Now it's $640. Mm -hmm. So I can put away more of my money before taxes for medical expenses, and I have a little extra cushion if I don't use it all up during the year. 
Awesome. <laughs> exactly. It's all about planning for your health care. Yeah. You know, giving you more control over those costs. But here's something to think about. With these changes, does it make you want to use an FSA more, knowing you can put away more money before taxes? Or does it make you think about maybe using a health savings account instead an HSA? Oh, that's a good point. It's like <laughs> trying to find that perfect balance. And hey, speaking of HSAs, those have changed a bit too. Those deductible and out-of-pocket limits, they've gone up for both self-only and family coverage for 2024. Yeah, it's always a trade-off, right? Yeah. Higher deductibles mean you're paying more out-of-pocket before the insurance kicks in. Right. But it usually means your monthly premiums are lower. And those HSA contributions can help cover those costs while also growing tax-free. It really comes down to what's best for your health needs and how much risk you're comfortable with. Definitely. It's like a reminder that taxes are only one part of your whole financial picture. Right. Now let's talk about something that might not apply to everyone, but it's a big deal for some. The foreign earned income exclusion. In 2024, it's going up to $126,500. Yeah. If you're a U.S. citizen working in another country, this is huge. That exclusion means you don't have to pay U.S. taxes on some of your foreign earnings. Think about it. That extra bit of exclusion could mean big savings for expats. What could you do with those extra savings? Maybe invest, pay off some debt, or even explore more of your new home. So many options. And while we're talking about specific tax situations, we can't forget about estate planning. That estate tax exclusion is going up too. It'll be $13,610,000 in 2024. That's a lot of money. It is. That exclusion tells you how much of an estate can be passed down without having to pay federal estate tax. And with the increase, even more wealth can be passed down tax-free, which is really important for people with high net worth. It makes you think about the future, right? Planning ahead and how you want to manage your assets. And it's not just about estates. Remember that gift tax exclusion we talked about? That's going up a little to, to $18,000 per person. You got it. You can be a little more generous with your gifts to loved ones without having to worry about those gift taxes. It's all about thinking strategically for now and for the future. Before I move on to part three, I want to go back to something you said earlier about getting personalized advice. We're giving you the overview here. But remember, all these tax changes can get pretty complicated and everyone's situation is different. It's like those choose your own adventure books, you know? Mm -hmm. So many different paths to take. Exactly. Don't be afraid to reach out to a tax pro. If you have questions or need some guidance for your specific situation, they can help you understand all the details and make sure you're taking advantage of everything that's available. It's like having a personal trainer for your taxes. Ah. You know? Mm, I like that. Okay, so we've covered a lot, but we've got more to come. We'll be back in part three to wrap up this deep dive with some final thoughts and some helpful resources. So stick with us. There's still more to uncover. And we're back for the last part of our 2024 tax changes deep dive. We've talked about a lot, right? From standard deductions to that tricky AMT, FSAs, HSAs, even touched on estate planning. We sure have. And hopefully you're feeling a bit more prepared for what's coming in 2024. Yeah, knowledge is power, right? Especially when it comes to your money. Absolutely. So as we wrap things up, what are the key takeaways here? What should our listeners remember as they navigate these new tax changes? Hmm, good question. Well, the main thing is inflation is behind most of these adjustments. Those higher standard deductions, the shifting tax brackets... It's all about keeping up with those rising costs. Right. It's like the tax code is constantly trying to catch up with inflation to try and keep things fair for everyone. Exactly. And that's why it's so important to stay informed, especially if your financial situation has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you've got a new job, a growing family, or you've moved to another country. Life throws you curveballs and your tax strategy might need to change too. That's true. Even small adjustments can make a difference. And what worked for you last year might not be the best this year. It's important to look at your tax planning regularly, mm. even if you think your situation is pretty simple. Absolutely. Yeah. You never know. No, we've said it before, but it's worth saying again. We're giving you the big picture here. But every single person's tax situation is different. What works for one person might not work for another. Exactly. And that's where a tax professional can really help. They can help you sort through the details, see how these changes affect you specifically, and come up with a plan that works for your financial goals. Okay, before we sign off, I want to mention those unchanged provisions we talked about earlier. Remember the personal exemption? It's still gone, thanks to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And while a lot is changing, there's still no limit on itemized deductions. Plus, that income threshold for phasing out the lifetime learning credit, it's staying put. Does any of this make you rethink your current strategy? It's a good point. It's easy to focus on what's changing. But knowing what's staying the same is important, too. And speaking of looking ahead, I want to leave you with this thought. Given all these adjustments and how much the tax code changes, 
How do you think tax planning strategies might change in the future? That's a really interesting question, like trying to predict the future of taxes. But hey, that's what keeps things exciting. Right, for sure. And don't forget the IRS website. It's a great resource for all things taxes. You can find all the details about these 2024 adjustments there in Revenue Procedure 2023-34. So go check it out. And if you get lost in the details, you know where to find us, right here on The Deep Dive. We're always here to break down these complex topics and make taxes a little less scary. Until next time, happy filing at